Hi, my name is Alistair Louise and welcome to this video. So recently at work, I was given a data manipulation task which started out with a dataset containing 10,000 elements. Just like any other analysis, my go-to was pandas. Well, it worked out great because my dataset initially only contained 10,000 elements and I was able to run my analysis within a couple of seconds. After this analysis was complete, the stakeholder approached me with a bigger dataset. This time it was 50,000 rows. Pandas was well capable of doing it and I was able to submit my analysis and it took around one minute to run the entire script. So this time the stakeholder approached me with an even bigger dataset. This was the biggest dataset I have ever worked with and it contained around 422 million rows. So once again I used Pandas to run the script on this big dataset. 2 hours went by, 4 hours went by, 6 hours went by and I think it was around at the 12th hour when my IDE just crashed. And this was when I started exploring alternative options. My first thought was, how can I parallelize this script? So I turned to existing Python libraries such as joblib and multiprocessing, and I manually split my pandas data frame into chunks and parallelized it across the CPU cores available in my computer. Well, this worked out pretty well actually, and I was able to bring down the processing time to just, I think, a couple of hours. Then my code became a mess because I had to split the data frame multiple times and merge it again and do the process again and again to complete the analysis as per the stakeholder's requirement. So that's when I asked Google Bard a question. How can I parallelize my data frame processing functions without using any built-in Python libraries such as multiprocessing or external libraries such as joblib? And the response that it gave me was a link to the Dask libraries documentation. And I was amazed to see that Dask had literally the same functions which Pandas provide, but parallelization has been handled internally by the library. So I literally threw away the code where I manually split the data frame and used Python libraries such as multiprocessing and joblib to do the parallelization for me. By letting Dask do its magic, I saw that the time taken to run the script reduced even further and it was more efficient and my code was much, much cleaner. So I thought I'll give you guys a quick walkthrough on the most commonly used Dask functions and how it is quite similar to Pandas and I will time each function to see how fast Dask is when compared to Pandas. So we will be comparing the following functions between Pandas and Dask, uh, starting by reading a large dataset, uh, followed by group by and aggregation functions. Then we will see how fast merging is between the libraries. Uh, we will also try to filter some data. Uh, we will also try to apply a function on the entire data set. And finally, we will just have a sneak peek into the distributed computing part, which is offered by Dask. I've given a link to the Dask documentation in this notebook for your reference and the libraries that we're going to use in this walkthrough are Dask and Pandas as expected. Uh, we also use the built-in Python library time and uh, NumPy for some vector manipulation. This is the link to this notebook in the description down below. Uh, feel free to have it open while I go through the notebook in this video. Now let's get started with the walkthrough. For demonstration purposes, I manually create a dataset containing 20 million rows and three columns, and I write it to a file called dataset.csv. We can use this dataset to compare the reading times between pandas and Dask. Now let's check out how much time it takes for the pandas library to read this dataset to memory. Pandas took around 2.1 seconds to read this dataset to memory. Now let's compare it with Dask. Dask took a fraction of the time taken by Pandas and it's around 0.009 seconds to do the same. The reason for this huge difference is not magic. So Dask internally partitions the dataset into chunks and loads it one at a time. Hence notice by the huge difference in the reading times. In order to verify that Pandas and Dask have read the same data frame, let's print out the heads. As you can see, it's the same data frame that has been loaded by both Pandas and Dask. Now since you have seen the differences in the reading times between pandas and dask, let's move on to the next function. We compare the time taken by pandas and dask to perform group by and aggregation on this dataset. In this example, we group by the first two columns A and B and aggregate on the third column C. First, let's see how much time pandas takes to perform this operation. Pandas took around 1.04 seconds to perform the group by and aggregation. Now let's see how much time dask takes to perform the same. Dask completes this operation almost instantly just taking it 0.007 seconds to do the same. As the size of the data frame grows, we can see how crucial this time saved could be. One could save even hours and hours of computation by simply replacing pandas with Dask. So now let's move on to another common operation with data frames, which is merging. 
And in this example, we merge the same data frame to itself. So in total, we would have 40 million rows. Now let's start with pandas. Okay, so pandas took around 18.5 seconds to perform the merging operation. Now let's see how much time Dask takes to do the same. Dask once again proves to be superior when compared to pandas, taking 0.03 seconds or almost instantly to perform this merging operation. And the reason for this all boils down to the fact that Dask works with partitions and parallelization internally. What took pandas 18.5 seconds took place instantly with Dask. It's almost amazing to think that for you to achieve this optimization in your scripts, all you need to do is replace a pandas data frame with a Dask data frame. And Dask will do all the heavy lifting for you. Now we move on to the next function, which is filtering the data. We only keep the rows whose value in column A is greater than 5 million. So now let's compare how much time pandas takes versus task. To be fair to pandas, pandas almost does this operation instantly as well. It took it around 0.0 seconds to filter the data, whereas task is still a clear winner in this example as well. Dask took the fraction of the time when compared to pandas while completing the operation in 0.002 seconds. Now let's move on to the next operation, which in my opinion is the most important of them all, which is applying a custom function over the entire data frame. In this example, the function simply multiplies the value provided by 2. Let's see how much time it takes for pandas to apply this function. Pandas took around 3.15 seconds to apply the function over the column A. Now let's see how much time Dask takes to do the same. As you can see, Dask applies the function instantly. It took Dask just 0.001 seconds to do the same. You may notice a difference in the implementation between pandas and Dask. In pandas, we use the dot apply method to apply a function over the entire data frame. Whereas in Dask, the equivalent is the dot map method. If you go through the Dask documentation, you may also come across the map partitions method. As I mentioned previously, Dask automatically partitions the data set into chunks. And what map partitions does is that it applies a function across each chunk parallelly. Now let's say in a hypothetical situation that you are working with a data set 10 times as large as what we are using in today's tutorial, and you have multiple machines or instances at your disposal. So if you would use Dask's map partitions function in this situation, Dask would map each chunk to each machine in the cluster and apply the function across each of these machines parallelly. Now, since I do not have multiple machines with me at my disposal right now, the map partitions functions perform the same as the map function above. And as you can see, it took around the same time to perform this operation. Now, the true power of task comes into play when we have a distributed cluster and a large data frame. The time taken to perform operations goes down exponentially since Dask automatically partitions the dataset and runs it across each of the machines present in the cluster. Now with that being said, Dask also performs significantly better than Pandas even when you have one single machine as seen in this walkthrough. And this brings an end to today's video and I hope that I've convinced you on why you should be using Dask instead of Pandas whenever you work with large data frames. I hope you have found this video useful and if it did, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. It truly really means the world to me. So with that being said, thank you guys, take care and peace.